Now, whether you've been chaotic evil or lawful good, Christmas comes early today, as GPTs are live for all ChatGPT Plus subscribers. But wait, that's not all, because also we can create our own assistants. GPTs and assistants were the two big things that were announced at the OpenAI development conference. In this video, I'll show you how to build your very own assistant in five minutes flat. Are you ready? Let's go. All right, so step one is go to platform.openai.com slash playground. So first things first, make sure that assistance is selected because there's also chat, the complete, complete text edit. But so we're looking at assistant, which should be there by default. So we're going to name our assistant the YouTube description creator. And in the instructions, we're going to put the role of the assistants. So I have it written down here. So you are a creator of YouTube video descriptions. I will provide you with a timestamp transcript of a YouTube video. Please do the following. You got to be polite in case of a Skynet scenario. You know what I'm talking about. So start by creating a brief and engaging summary. Then break the video into sections with headings. Start each heading with the approximate timestamp where it begins. And then I give it some examples of how to do that. So in YouTube, you can have those video chapters that people can skip to if they want to see certain portions of the video. And the way you do that, you find where in the video you want those chapters to start and you add this sort of notation. Well, you don't have to use brackets. I use brackets because I'm, I'm cool, but you don't have to. You can just write zero, zero. You know, you can write it just out like this, you know. So, but I like those brackets. So I said, use brackets, you know, zero, zero as the notation for the beginning of the video, or for example, five minutes, 30 seconds, four or five minutes and 30 seconds into the video, for example. So I give it two examples here and here of how I want it to look just so that it knows what format, kind of what notation I'm trying to use. So I'm going to take that and paste it into there. Click save. All right. So the instructions are in there. model. So the very first one is GPT-4 1106 preview. So that's the version that was released on 1106, November 6th at the developer conference. So GPT-4 Turbo, I guess is what it will be called. So this is going to be the go-to model once it gets updated. There's a lot of other ones. So GPT-4 is obviously very good. Here's the problem, retrieval. So retrieval enables the assistance to get the knowledge from files that you or other users upload, right? So that's kind of a big deal, right? That's its memory. That's its RAG, retrieval augmented generation. So as you can see here, I cannot, can do it, Captain. So we have to go back to GPT-4, the turbo, the preview, and then I'm able to add retrieval. I'm able to add code interpreter. There's functions that we can put in here. We're not going to work with that quite yet, but they have two examples of, you know, getting weather or stock prices, etc. And here we can put the files that will be useful for all the projects you run with this assistant. So for example, when we upload, we're going to upload our timestamp document in just a second. We're going to upload it here. So we're going to click here and then we're going to upload it from here. But that's the, the file that we're going to be working on for this particular session. This is going to be for things that we're going to be working on in general. So we'll look more deeply into that later, what goes in here. But for the time being, I think we're fine with just the instructions, the model. And now we just need a timestamped transcript of a YouTube video. Let's pick one at random. Hey, let's try this. So once you have your video, scroll down to where it says show transcript, click on show transcript. That's going to pull up the transcript here. Just copy and paste the whole thing into a text file. So that's going to look something like this. As you can see here, it starts with zero, zero, and it goes all the way to 20 minutes, right? Doing closed captions and providing the right type stab format used to be a big pain in the butt. The fact that you can just copy and paste this thing and upload it and have ChatGPT figure out what that means is, is kind of a big deal. A lot of this stuff is on easy mode now. All right, so we just save it as a text file, and I'm sure other files will work as well, PDF, whatever. All right, so before we we can interact with it, we have to click Save. So it saves that assistant with whatever name we gave it. It gives it a little code name. So now we can upload the file and say, do it for this file. Or I guess you probably don't even have to say anything, but let's click Add and Run. And here it is. So YouTube Description Creator, based on the transcript, here's a summary and section breakdown of this YouTube video. So the video summary is here. Explore the incredible and instant applications of OpenAI's new tools with a focus on GPT-3, GPT-4. So it noticed the AI-driven esports commentary, which is smart because I don't even think I've used esports, that terminology in there, but that's terrific. Creating Spotify playlists for a musical festival like Coachella, AI critique and action. So all this is great. I'm loving this. I mean, it mentioned GPT-3 here, which I don't know if we've talked about that in that video. I don't think so. Really, it's about GPT-4 Turbo, GPT-4 Vision, etc. But things like that, again, I think we're going to be able to massage that a little bit with, you know, adding files over here that will specify 
what things we're talking about, what to talk about, how to describe certain things, maybe a certain way of speaking, etc. We will be able to tweak this to, to, to get it to be perfect, but I'm really liking this. So it's saying at zero, zero introduction to open developments. And it kind of gives some bullet points about what happened there. At 17 seconds, this happens. At one minute 50, this happens. 206, this happens. So this is terrific. And I know just by looking at it that this is in fact right around the time when those things happen. So people that will be clicking on those timestamps to go to that video chapter, they're going to be landing right kind of where that, that begins. So this is perfect. Now, currently, this is just a preview of this model. So we are limited. There's a rate limit to how much we can pull. So as you can see here, it ends at five minutes. If I say continue, so if I say continue, the reason it stopped is because we probably ran out of the tokens that we can use for whatever that hour, that 10 minute in interval, whatever interval they used. So it looks like, for example, the GPT-4 Vision has 20 requests per minute. So for example, some of them have a token per minute, like 20,000. I think this one limited me at 10,000 tokens. So it's saying here, if the summary sections are accurate, I will continue with the final portion. Shall I proceed? Yes. And so I've, I let some time pass. So hopefully now it's going to be able to finish it because earlier I did get an error message saying, you know, you've used 7,000 tokens. Your new request will cost 4,000 tokens. You only have 10,000 tokens as sort of that rate limit. So you have to wait, you know, 10 seconds or whatever it is. So here it is. It finishes it up. And also look at that. So once I said continue, it finished from five minutes to 15 minutes, and then it stopped again. So shall I proceed? So it sort of, I think did that in order to break up the, how many tokens I'm using. So I said, yes, and it finished it up all the way to, you know, I think the video is 22 minutes long. Now, if you haven't had to do YouTube descriptions and break down, you know, at what minutes different chapters are in the video, you might be wondering, is this a big deal? And the answer to that is yes. Yes. It's, it's kind of a pain in the butt. I mean, it's not super complicated, but it is a bit tedious. It's something that provides value to the watcher. It provides value to YouTube because it knows what your video is about. It's a great thing to do, but it's, it's tedious. It's boring. It takes time and sort of the old school logic based software kind of sucks at doing this. You do need these neural nets, this AI, these GPTs to be able to do this intelligently. So it took me, I would say maybe two minutes to create this, probably less. It might be saving me, let's say 20 minutes a day, 15 minutes a day, just by plugging this in here and running it. And I'm just getting started because there's so much more that I can do with this by adding more files, more functionality. There's no doubt in my mind that I'm going to be using the living bejesus out of this on a daily basis. And this is just one of many. This is one of a thousand of 10,000 of assistants that I'm going to create. And as for the cost, today I spent 32 cents. Looks like I used just under 30,000 tokens. And before this, I was messing around with it. So th that's not even how much this cost. This was probably, I mean, maybe half, maybe a third of it. So something that used to take me, let's say 20 minutes to do now can be automated for, I mean, let's call it 25 cents. Let's call it a quarter. And I'm sure I'm not even scratching the surface of what this thing can do once I optimize it and kind of fine tune it to my needs. And we didn't even get into the functions. Yeah, it's here. It's real. You should be using this, I think. I hope you enjoyed that. Subscribe to not miss any more of these news and tutorials and various AI content. This is the place to be. Same time, same channel. My name is Wes Roth. Thank you for watching.